Nashville isn't just the home of country music. There's gospel music, television shows, and movies. Our next guest has had her hand in just about every area of entertainment you can think of. Kathy Lee Gifford. Probably since we started doing good news, there is one guest that I always dreamed and hoped we would get, and today she is with us. Please welcome Kathy Lee Gifford. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. And you are absolutely as beautiful in person as you were when we woke up with you in the mornings. You're so just... glad I came. <laughs> Aren't you glad you came? This is a good day. Now, you've got a lot of new things going on in your life. I do, I Tell do. Wonderful new the album, latest. General Grace. Yeah, my yeah. first inspirational album in 25 years. I did three years ago when I was really involved in the Christian music industry mm -hmm. and then God just took me on a different path and it, my ministry and my my focus was supposed to be in the secular world and and it was lonely yeah. <laughs> and it well, is it's lonely. like being a missionary it is being a mission we're all supposed to be missionaries right. you know it's easy to give to missions hard to go on one that's right, right. but um, so um, but Maranatha Music came to me a couple of years ago and said, the, the wonderful guy named Randy Allward, and said, I really believe that God's placed it on my heart that I'm supposed to ask you to do uh, a gospel record for us. And not gospel, but the Christian, contemporary right. Christian music. And I, I, I was sitting there with a stack of lyrics that I had written over the last six or seven or eight years that were, I mean, during my darkest, loneliest, deepest troubled times. And, and I was writing musicals, uh, and so it just seemed like I was in the right place to share some of the, some of the honest, gut-wrenching, you know, experiences that I went through in a way that would be of encouragement to other people. Now, you actually wrote a song for someone who is a close friend of yours, Ruth and Billy Graham, I right? Did. Tell us about that beautiful you song. You know, Ruth, my whole family came to know the Lord through through Billy's. I did uh, too. Yes, I mean, so many of us are, are, are children of God because because of Billy. This album is filled with, with songs that I, I know because I lived them. And I'm getting letters from people now saying, you wrote that song about me, didn't you? I mean, I just went through this, or I didn't know anybody felt the way I did because I thought I was the only one in the world. Right. And so that's when you rejoice that you know that that you have sort of hit a nerve, sure. an honest nerve that that in, in hopefully is going to be a blessing in people's well, lives. Well, that's what I loved about you said that, and all that God has done in your life, He doesn't leave crumbs. No and, crumbs and I'm, on God's yes. table. That yeah. was beautiful. Thank you. It's beautiful. And I love something unique in that you've written a companion book yeah. for the CD in a way. Yeah. The Zondervan people came to me. They had read the lyrics and heard the record, and they said, would you consider doing a companion devotional book of meditations to expand on and expound upon right. more the themes of peace? How can we be sure of God's promises? How can we depend on Him in troubled times? Uh, how do we get through the storms of life? How can we remain um, faithful in faithless right. relationships? How can we, you know, in, in, in the face of all kinds of adversity, continue to praise God in the midst of it? Not not just at the end of the storm when, when the clouds have parted, but in the midst of the storm, how do we... And I guess people that have watched me go through what I went through in a public way, yeah. you know, they, they would look at the letters from people who weren't believers many times, and they'd go, how can you get up in the morning and go on TV and yeah. smile and stay with your husband and love your family and be nice to Regis? And, you right, know, right. <laughs> and I would always have, you know, I, I could always write them back because, I, because of God's grace, yeah. because of his gentle grace in my life. So, yeah. you know, I've been a Christian almost 40 years, and when I first came to know the Lord as an adolescent child, I understood his love, but almost 40 years later, I understand his grace. Yeah. You know, it's a whole other thing. Yes, it is. Well, we have to share a little story with you because I was, I am a Presbyterian minister. Well, for And you, for I know. That's right. And <laughs> Cheryl, got me. And Cheryl <laughs> taught kindergarten. And I realized in our church that Sunday school was right. really boring and most people didn't go. And I woke up in the middle of the night with this idea to do Sunday school like a talk show. Oh, fun. And I wrote all this up, and we we're going to call it Good News. And she came downstairs at like 6 in the morning. Dressed as Kathy Lee. Well, no, she came down, <laughs> yes. and she said, what are you doing? I said, I have this idea. We're going to do Sunday school like a talk show. We're going to host it. We're going to have people share their story. A talk show is really a testimonial. That's exactly It just doesn't right. feel like it. Right. And it's an I entertaining said, one. It and sure is. It is. And I said, we're going to, it's going to be like Regis and Kathy Lee. And only, I said, and we're going to host you're it. You're no Regis. 
I'm no Kathy Lee. Oh, Are you I crazy? Don't know. I don't know. But which you have to but, say, you you made it so effortless. Yes. Do you it was miss effortless. interviewing people because you had such a chemistry and you just well, put people you. so That's, at ease? Do you, you miss that yeah. part of it? I don't. No. Yeah. Fifteen years was plenty. Yeah. Regis and I are still great pals. We no. see each other for dinner every now and then, and and we talk on the phone. But. Um, no, I knew God had a whole new, whole new yeah. thing for me, and uh, it's interesting to turn 50 at a time in our culture where basically the world says they're done with women by that point. We live in a society that worships celebrity and worships uh, youth, except if you're an old celebrity, and then it's like, boy, it's nothing worse. <laughs> and um, and uh, to, to know that God is doing a work in my life now that is so much more fertile yeah. and more creative than anything I've ever done before, because he's never finished with us. And our walk with him is for eternity. You say, how have you liked the last four years spending breakfast and mornings with your children? Well, sometimes that gets a little heavy. <laughs> really, only a dad could ask that, right? Because you have to get up and get I don't ready for everything. My children are perfect, but, well, no, they, they they're aren't. getting close to teen they years, aren't, aren't they? Oh, that Cody's changes. 14. Quite a bit. Cody's 14. Oh, my Cassidy's goodness. almost 11. Now. We saw Cody in a movie on Disney. Yes. That he did a great they job. with yes. me when yes. he was nine years old and never, never said another word afterwards. He sort of got that out of the system. And now he does a little TV show called um, Teen Eyewitness News. He's the yes. sportscaster like oh, his daddy. Oh, fantastic. And that's that's cool. But you've still been so active with your foundations, mm -hmm. and so you're mm -hmm. still able to do all that. You've just sort of regrouped Found it. Found a different way to right. do it. Yeah, right. I worked for Variety the Children's Charity for years. It's a show business ch right. children's charity. And I used to go all around the country doing their telethons. Right. Once I got married and had my own children, I said, no, right. somebody else who's young and single should do that now. Mm -hmm. I should stay home and do my own and be a mother mm -hmm. and be a good mother, as best, best I can be. So I started just doing the local telethon, and from that came Cody House and Cassidy's Place, which takes care of 200 children a day mm -hmm. in New York City that are crack addicted or, or yeah. uh, have the AIDS virus. Right. So, um, you know, it's, we don't have to be missionaries in Africa yeah. to serve right. the Lord. He can serve us right at home as well. And in the, our high-tech world, we can do so much yeah. without our family suffering. Yeah. Sure. Plus, my children now can deal with more than they used to be able to. Right. I can be, if they don't even notice I'm gone, they're so busy now. Yeah. So you try to you try to structure your life uh, around them because they didn't ask to come into this world. We invited them. Yeah. You know. Yes. Well, well, we thank you for ex uh, sharing your experiences with God's grace, and we're just glad that we can still find you because so many people yeah. fell in love with you, and we're glad oh, you're happy that's and they didn't peaceful. Know me, trust me. <laughs> and, and, and you know, <laughs> anytime you want to sit in this chair by me, come on over. Hey, talk to me, people. We boy. would love it. <laughs> oh, we just and Kathy Lee, you're adorable. <laughs> really, you're no Kelly though. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for more with Kathy Lee Gifford. Good News with Don and Cheryl is brought to you by Bella in theaters October 26th.